I'm Lisa Arkenstall. I'm 50. Just turned 50. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> um, a little bit about life growing up. It was horrible. Mm. It was horrible, yeah. I was getting raped from his stepdad from the age of two. But none of the family believed me. Your mum didn't no. believe you? No. Because I was the naughty one. So, because I was naughty before, I was lying all the time. So, got kicked out at 15 and ended up out here. Been out here since. Since you were 15? Yeah. But I can imagine, like, that you weren't being naughty, you're reacting out to what's yeah. happening to you. Yeah. Yeah, but they didn't believe me. So. They only believed me when my mum and dad got divorced and he married this other woman. And she had a 12 year old daughter and mm. I said to it, I said to her, watch him because he'll do to her what he did to me. And then while I was in the jail, my mum and my sister come up crying. And they were like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I says, well, what are you sorry for? I'm not knowing nothing. It's what are you sorry for? Mm. She was like, well, he's done to her what he did to you. And then when he died, he, when he died, he admitted everything on his deathbed. So he never got no, never got caught for it, no. like officially. Nothing, no, not a thing. So. And was it your mum that kicked you out, or you decided no, to leave him? Him, yeah, kicked me out just before my sixteenth birthday. So. What was it like being out here at fifteen? It was horrible. It was horrible. I mean, I've been beaten, I've had my legs broken, been thrown over the canal on Winchell Street and bust my ankles. I mean, it's not a nice place to come, do you no. know what I mean? But if you have to, you've got to. You've got no choice in the matter. But people don't understand that. They think you need, you want to be out here, but you don't. No. So, one of those things. And I guess now is it sort of all you've ever known? Yeah, I mean, I have given it up. I did give it up for a bit, but then things happened and I've ended up back out here. So... How long did you give it up for? Um, 15 years. Wow. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah, I had the kids, yeah. But because I was on methadone, social workers were that, because of my past, they were on my case and told me to do this, get rid of the dad, this, that and the other, so I'd done all that, mm -hmm. and yet they still took him. They said I wasn't stable enough because I wouldn't tell him what we did, because I wouldn't go to a, a psychiatrist and talk about what happened to me. Yeah. They said that I wasn't stable enough, so they took my boys off my... So. And was that what prompted you to come back out? No. Um, I ended up in jail in 2015, got out in 16. Um, I was with this guy that I'm, I'm running from now. Um, before I went in, this guy, the guy that I was with broke my neck in three places. So every now and then I might have a fit. So, But this guy that I got out with, that I'm running from now, he was raping me while I was fitting, or raping me while I was sleeping. So I've been moved into an hostel now. Mm -hmm. I can say up my mouth dead dry. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm up in an hostel up in sale at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was getting raped. Well, I don't even know why he was selling me that then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, he broke me. This other guy broke my neck, but the one that I'm fleeing from now, he was raping me while I was fitting. So, until I left him, I was clean. And then, since I've been put in this hostel, that's when I've ended up coming back out here. Yeah. Yeah, so, it's the circumstances that, if you don't want to come out here, you don't have to. Do you know what I mean? So, but things have happened, so I've ended you feel like up you back have to, out here. Yeah. So. What made you, was it your kids that made you give it up yeah. in the first place? Yeah. 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 
do you still get to see them at all or have any relationship with them? I see one of her in Phoenix, I see him. Orion I'm supposed to see but he's in a bit of a mood at the moment so I've not seen him for ages. But my other one, he phones me every other day, yeah. That's good. So, yeah, I've got a good relationship with him. That's really good. Yeah, so... And you were saying before um, about the guy that you're fleeing from, would you say that that's sort of, um, I don't want to say a common thing, but do you feel like you repeat that in relationship? As in, like... It's like you go with... So that's all you've known all your life, so that's all you seem to head for is bad boys, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or bad men, whichever. So, yeah. What did you want to be when you were growing up? I wanted to be in the RAF. Mm. Yeah. Or on submarines, yeah. Or Oh, see, submarines get the life out of me. Because I, I didn't finish my schooling or anything and ended up out here. Yeah. I didn't do it, so... Where would you like to see yourself in sort of five years' time? In my own place with my boys. Um, I was working for Kellogg's not long back, so I want to go end up back at work, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So... It's not a life out here, eh? I mean, I'm getting too old now, <laughs> but it's not, no. I can imagine it's terrifying. Like, it must be so scary sometimes. Yeah, but you can, if you get a vibe, you can get vibes of people. And Do you pick you, it up? Yeah, when? you can pick up a bad vibe, and if that, you listen to that, you'd be all right. So just always trust your gut. Yeah, which I've done it myself, felt uneasy with him, but still got him because I needed the money. So, but yeah. What, um, are you taking any steps to, like, get out of this, or...? Yeah, I'm think... working with the drug team and everyone, working with MASH, so... We've heard a lot of good things about them. Yeah, MASH, MASH are brilliant. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so they've been out here since They've you... been out here since Mitchell Street at times. Because we were all up on that side. Do you mm. know near the gay scene? Yeah. That's where it, we all were at one time. Up there. So they started up there and then they've moved? Moved it down here, yeah. 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 And do they offer sort of like a lot of support? Mash do, yeah. 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 Is there anything else you feel like other people could do to help? or any more help you would like to get. Just don't judge people until, you know, like, you get to know them, because not all of us are bad. Yeah, there are bad ones out here. <laughs> <laughs> but there's bad people in all walks of no, life. No, I, I know that, but still, most of these out here are nasty. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But then again, you get the odd good ones, do you know what I mean? I know I'm not a princess, I'm far from it, but I've got feelings, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, do, I treat people how I want to be treated, do you yeah. know what I mean? Treat people with respect and you get it back, do you know what I mean? Do you feel like you do get judged quite a lot? Yeah, yeah. Always, yeah. I can so. imagine that's not the nicest. Even even when you're not out here and like you just clean on your methadone, you get judged for being on your methadone. That's why I got let go from Kellogg's. Mm, for being on the methadone. For being on methadone, yeah. Yeah, so it's like they're not supposed to, but they do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? What age did you start taking drugs? 16. Mm. Mm. Did you st what did you start out with? Heroin. Straight on to heroin, yeah. Wow. Yeah. How did you get introduced to that? Is it, is it My daughter's dad. Mm. Mm hmm. He was dead against it until he went into the jail and come out a heroin addict. And then he started beating me and that, that's how I ended up out here through my daughter's mm. dad, yeah. Which is crazy because you'd think it'd be harder to get in jail, but apparently no. not. No. It's it's the it's easier than being out here. Mm. It's rife in jail, yeah. Yeah. 
That's crazy. Mm -hmm. More drugs in the jail than what there is out here. <laughs> yeah. Have you got any advice for anyone watching this? Just all the young girls, just keep away. Don't think that you can get money like that because you can't. You know, some nights you don't get money. Some mm. night, yeah, some nights you're out here all night and don't make a penny. That's so people think that is an easy thing. It's not. Quick money. It's not easy at all. And then you've got to deal with all the other women out here as well. Do you know what I mean? Who think that they're somebody? Mm. Just keep away. I was going to say, do you feel? Do you form like bonds with the women out here, or is I'm it more each for their own? No. No, I stay on my own, me, because I don't trust. I used to, but they just stab you in the back. I've learned just to keep away from him. Stay yeah. on your own, you're better off. So, there are bad ones out here. But then again, there are good ones out here as well. I've met some beautiful women out here. Yeah. And then it's the others that give us a bad name. So we get beat for what they've done. Do you? Oh God, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Uh, somebody robs someone, they come back and get another girl and beat them up. That's what all the murders have been through other women. But there've been a lot of murders around here. Yeah, yeah. There's been a load of murders. Yeah. Mm. I'm talking about, but yeah, girls do go missing. Yeah. yeah, it is, but it's what we've known. It's your it? life, yeah. It's all we've known, so. Have you got anything you'd like to ask? No. That's great, thank you so much. You all. Thank you very much for watching Lisa's story. We're now going to talk a little bit about it. Please don't forget to subscribe if you have enjoyed it. So, Lisa, yeah. um, so we'll start from the beginning. She was sexually abused from the age of two yeah and then I think the worst bit well apart from the abuse was the fact that her mum didn't believe what was happening like the strength it must have taken her to tell her mum what was going on like the strength that it must have taken for her to tell her mum for her mum then not to believe it yeah and I think especially when it's happening with someone that lives in the same house as you like home then doesn't become isn't a safe place to go home to every night. Oh. To not be believed until her dad's new wife's daughter reported it as well. It's hard. It's hard. It's a shame to say that some woman prefer to save the relationship than their child. Than to save their child. And I think unfortunately like that's not uncommon. I think sometimes women do put their partners ahead of their child. Yeah. Which shouldn't... It shouldn't ever happen. Never. Never. And I think a partner that truly like respects you and has good intentions will understand that. That the, your child always comes first. You shouldn't even get to that point. No. You shouldn't even get to that point and value themselves if they come before the kids should not even get to that point but then i appreciate it's difficult as well believing that someone you love is capable of doing that yeah you don't want to believe that you don't want to believe it but i think even if it takes a while for you to get your head around and believe it, i think you should believe your kid instantly because kids don't lie about that kind of thing no and then do you Due to the sexual abuse and um, getting addicted to heroin with her ex-boyfriend at the age of 15, she ended up being kicked out of home and working on the streets to fund that drug addiction. At the age of 15? 15. 15. It's not uncommon. It's, my question is, like, where is the social services? That's it. Where were they? 
I don't know because we don't know were they even involved or were they not involved at all or did they have no idea what was happening then you'd like to think like the teachers in school would have picked up on something yeah but then I guess like she said her mum didn't believe her because she was the naughty one the naughty one I'm guessing there's a fair few like naughty kids in school and if that's how you're acting out because of that yeah maybe the signs are difficult to miss i don't know whether the school as well just labeled her as a naughty child and didn't take it any further but dropping out of school as well at 15 you would think that that would raise like some alarm bells yeah the teacher would have known, known mm -hmm. about it you would hope anyway yeah but being in that kind of lifestyle at age 15 is it's not nice it's not no. nice it's not nice at all um and i think obviously her ex-partner had got her addicted to heroin which was the first drug that she'd ever tried and to start on such a hard like i'm not sure i even knew what heroin was at 15 yeah but then whether does that make it easier to then try if you're offered it like i've never been offered heroin so but i don't know if someone did offer you you're speaking to the person that wouldn't even try weed like <laughs> i definitely don't think i'd have gone for heroin <laughs> i'm a wimp i'm an absolute wuss but again and lisa admits it herself like that cycle of abusive relationships She's repeated it her whole life. And she acknowledges that herself, that she regularly chooses bad boys. I mean, at the moment, she's running from another ex-partner. Probably, yeah. And that's how she's ended up back she's on the street. She doesn't choose it, I think. I don't think she consciously chooses it. I think a, unconsciously. A yeah. Not, no, I don't even think it, it's not a preference. I think she probably knows that they're far from ideal. I think unconsciously, it's what she's drawn to again and again because she's not got to the root of why she chooses. Like sometimes when that's all you've known, yeah. the thought of a stable relationship with a so-called maybe normal person yeah. is, you almost maybe view it as boring. True. Like there's no spark because you're used to the fighting and the arguments and yeah. it's mad, isn't it? is but i think same as the lady that we spoke to before like she and she she's trying her hardest to break that cycle i think you have to get to the root of the issue as to why why yeah why you again and again and i think knowing that you do it is the first step the first step breaking to, that cycle to acknowledge it yeah acknowledging that you do have this problem where you do repeatedly choose mm -hmm. relationships that are far from ideal and I would say, like, from listening to Lisa talk, that that's what causes the majority of, of her problems. Problems. Because she was clean for 15 years. 15 it's, years she was out of that long, lifestyle. It's a very long time, 15 years. She was managing her drug addiction. She was on methadone. She had her kids. She was working. Do you think you can manage your addiction? Yeah, you think, like... I don't think there's ever a such thing as once you're an addict, I think you're always an addict, yeah. whether it's a recovering addict or an active addiction. But I think you can definitely manage manage it. Yeah. Like I'm not I cannot imagine it's easy. But I imagine that you can manage it. Functional addict. No no, not even because a, a functional addict is someone who's still using drugs but does a day to day life, isn't it? Yeah. But you can be like a recovering addict. Yeah. But I think even recovering addicts, like I think they're aware that they have to work hard on that each day. Because all it takes is one bad day or one bad thing to happen and you can be back to... A relapse. Yeah, back to square one. And I think that just shows like, I don't want to say how addictive that lifestyle is, but how difficult that lifestyle is to leave behind by the fact that she could have left it behind for 15 years yeah. and yet she's still back 
back in it. And that's because she was, again, viewing, fleeing from a violent relationship. relationship. And she's ended up back at the only thing she knows. But the fact that she acknowledges that and she wants, like, all she wants is her own place and her kid's back. Super. And she said she's working, it's working with MASH and working towards it, working with the drug team to get back to what she had before, which yeah. is all she wants. Take a baby step. Mm. If she's consistent, she'll make it. Mm -hmm. Take it one, I mean, even if it's not one day at a time, one hour at a time, yes. just get through that hour. But I think her story is really, and I think she, I think she really, I feel like she really sums it up with her advice at the end for young girls to just not get into this lifestyle into it. because it is so difficult to leave behind. It's not glamorous. It's not. It's not. You're not going to make a lot of money. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. Look at all the things she was talking about, like having her legs broken and being thrown off the canal bridge and stuff. It's dangerous, it's really dangerous, and I don't think we see that because you don't hear about it. No. You don't hear about it. It's or you don't hear about it enough. Oh. Like, look at all those vigils that were um, held for, like, what was the name? Sarah Everard. Yeah. And I'm not saying that what happened to her wasn't tragic, but things like that are happening daily to women just because it happened mm. to a white middle class woman it's front page news and it shouldn't like things like that are happening daily to people daily. like lisa yeah and we never hear about it no so i think her advice to stay away from that lifestyle the bottom stay away mm -hmm. and i just hope that she gets everything i hope she get well and she get the treatment that she needed yeah Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you again next week. Please don't forget to subscribe if you have enjoyed it. Thank you.